can't just add a nuclear file to the benzene with NO2 without having a leaving group? That's right. Or you could, but you wouldn't get a reaction. Uh, because there wouldn't be a leaving group. Well, how would you get the CL on it in the first place? Well, uh, you tell me. By electrophilic substitution. That's right. You could get the chlorine on by an electrophilic aromatic substitution. And then you'd also have to get the nitro group on. Maybe so we should put the nitro group on first. No, it would be better to put the chlorine on first to get an ortho repair on. Because then if you put the NO2 on first, the CL would leave it up. Well, according to sterics, wouldn't it go all the way? So if we put the chlorine on first, now if we try to put, uh, oh yeah, and you're right, now you can put the nitro group on and this would be an O and P director. So that actually would work good. You can put this on, and we know that even though this is a deactivator, halogens are O and P directors, and then that would put it in the correct place. That would be one good way to set yourself up for a nucleophilic substitution. Yeah. So on the test, you can be expected to combine um, all the different benzene reactions you've seen, both electrophilic and aromatic. So before you can do the nucleophilic substitution, you might have to do some electrophilic substitution. But we're just going to presume that we have this. Now we need to add our nucleophile. A common nucleophile here is hydroxide. Let's see if we can figure out what the mechanism for this is going to be. Maybe I'll give you a hint. This is actually very similar to the attack, nucleophilic attack on carboxylic acid derivatives. The reaction in some ways is similar to the attack on carboxylic acid derivatives. So let's see if we can go through the electron pushing arrows here. Is nucleophilic So first we unform the aromaticity. But then we know in pretty much all the benzene reactions we've seen, the pattern is unform the aromaticity and then reform the aromaticity. So now we're going to reform the aromaticity. In order to do that, we have to kick off this leaving group. Remember that in benzene, there's only room for one substituent on each carbon. So if we're going to have the hydroxide stick around, we have to kick off the chlorine. So if the chlorine was missing, would you that's right. You would get basically no reaction. That's actually something you're likely to be tested on. When can you and when can't you do the nucleophilic aromatic substitution? So before we finish this, we'll, we'll review all the things that we need. But yeah, the leaving group must be ortho or para in order for this to work. So I think you saw why I thought this was similar to the attack on carboxylic acid derivatives, because there it's, the attack was unform the carbonyl and then reform the carbonyl. And that was a substitution reaction overall, too. Well, here we're unforming the aromaticity and then reforming the aromaticity. Just like with the carboxylic acid derivatives, we kick the electrons up onto the oxygen and then we kick them back down. Here we're kicking the electrons onto this carbon and then we're kicking them back down. The mistake that students might make is trying to do this in one step. So that some students might just try to do this and have the chlorine leave at the same time as the hydroxide comes in. But that just doesn't happen, just like it doesn't happen with carboxylic acid derivatives. Is it because it's like a tertiary carbon? That's part of it. So basically, students think of this like an SN2, maybe. Uh, this would be like an SN2. But SN2, like you said, doesn't work for, um, well, for actually, I should say that it's for sure. Yeah, it doesn't work for sp2 hybridization. It's only for sp3. So the fact that this is sp2 means there's a different mode of attack. This is not a, just a normal SN2. And it's certainly not an SN1, because in SN1, the leaving group would leave before the nucleophile came in. So it's a whole new type of substitution, nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Incidentally, there's a bunch of other resonant structures you could draw in this picture here, but we didn't really need to draw all of them to show what was happening here. We could have put the negative charge in a bunch of other places or all the way up on the nitro, but this shows the basic idea.
Now, what good is this? Well, this gives us a way to make phenol. Again, that's something we can't do with electrophilic aromatic substitution. We can't put on OH groups, and phenol is a very useful molecule, so this is an important reaction to have in our toolkit. Someone was asking whether this is reversible. One way you can see this is not reversible is, is this a leaving group? No. No. So it would be hard to reverse this because that would involve kicking the hydroxide off. Even if you were to protonate it? Yeah, I guess uh, theoretically you could uh, protonate it first. But the problem is if you try to protonate that oxygen, there would be competing reactions where you protonate the benzene ring and do an electrophilic aromatic substitution. So anyway, I've never seen anybody reverse these reactions. That's not something you'd be expecting. What would happen here? No reaction. Ah, I was trying to make a trick question, but I guess it wasn't a very dubious trick. All right, this is in the meta position, so there would be no reaction. Very good. All right, and um, what would happen here? Uh, you can replace the CL with the OH. Okay, good. Now, it's important to know the mechanism for this reaction, but it should also be very easy to draw the product without going through the mechanism. It's very simple. You simply take off the leaving glue and put it in the nucleophile. So here I drew the product without the mechanism. specific and say it's a methyl sulfonate or a mesylate. That's right. Remember that sulfonates are when we have a alkyl group connected to this type of SO3 type arrangement. So this is another type of leaving group that you might see here. So you don't have to use halogens. Another common type of leaving group is a sulfonate. instructor use the, the term ipso substitution? Yes. So this is also called an ipso substitution. Uh -huh. So this is also an ipso. Pardon? Like as a uh, synonym for nucleophilic Yeah. Or the book actually called it a nucleophilic aromatic ipso substitution. I'm not sure. Ipso means itself. I don't know what that has to do with this. But anyway, if they say ipso, that this is the only ipso reaction you guys have. substitution. There must be an electron withdrawing group on the ring, usually nitro. There must be a leaving group on the ring, usually a halogen, but maybe a sulfonate. And the leaving group must be ortho or para to the electron withdrawing group. So we've shown all those characteristics. And you should also be able to explain why it has to be ortho or para using the resonance argument that we gave earlier. I think that covers the basics for nucleophilic aromatic substitution, so we can move on to the benzene reaction.
And remember that all the kinds of directing and activating effects for electrophilic aromatic substitution are reversed from the nucleophilic, so we don't want to get this confused. 